And today we're talking about homeschooling special needs kids, teens, children, all ages. I'm a homeschooling mom, and so is our guest, Terry McKee from IAJ Ministries. She's also doing the most incredible homeschooling special needs expo. We're going to dive into it, talk about it, exactly why you should be going to it. I'm going to be there. And if you want to hang out with me in the greater Charlotte, North Carolina area, um, you definitely don't want to miss this. It's June 28th to 29th. If you're watching this later, don't worry about it. It will happen the next year. So welcome, Terry. I'm so glad you're here. We're going to dive into all things homeschooling and help parents who either are homeschooling or considering homeschooling. This is the episode you want to listen to. So welcome. Hey, thank you, Roseanne. It's great to be back here. <laughs> Yeah, we always have a great conversation, and Terry is Thank such you. an expert in homeschooling special needs kids that this is a co the conversation you want to list, listen to. And if you want to do a deeper dive yes. and you really want to meet people who are, you know, the curriculum, you know, of homeschooling or different products, you want to go to the Homeschooling Special Needs Expo. I'm there as a keynote with Temple Grandin. How cool is that? So yeah. you want to make sure that you're getting there. I know it's amazing. So she even has a special awesome. degree. Um, I got to get my tickets mm -hmm. to that because that's going to sell out. So, so welcome. Yes. And I, you know, tell us a little bit about how you got into homeschooling um, and, and why, you know, homeschooling your special needs child. Sure. Absolutely. I, I got into homeschooling um, because Basically, my husband and I, we were not happy with what um, the local schools were doing. And we just did not want that kind of education for our daughter. Um, then my husband was uh, shot and paralyzed in an attempted armed robbery. And so we took the advice. My daughter was in kindergarten at that time. And we took some advice from well-meaning friends but they were wrong um and we put her enrolled her at this in the second semester of kindergarten in the local public school because my friend said oh it's just too much on you with greg and laura and all this and it was at that time and she went to kindergarten then first and second grade and during that time especially second grade we um we got a diagnosis of chronic migraines. We got a diagnosis of um, ADHD and dyslexia. So she had a lot of things going on. So therefore she had an IEP. But the, in second grade, the IEP was not being followed at all in public school. You know, it's, it's your, an IEP in public school is legally binding. I mean, it's a contract between you and the teacher's and the um, aides and the specialists, right? And so it's their duty and job legally to provide those services to your child. Well, if that's not being done, there's no hope for it. I mean, you, you can have all the IEP meetings you want to, they won't do anything. That's what we found in our case anyway. And so at the end of second grade, we, we were told, oh, Laura will never, will not read. And she'll, she's reading on the kindergarten level in second grade. So we need to hold her back. And it was at the last IEP meeting. And we just, I just said, you know what we are going to do? We are going to have an IEP for next year for third grade, but we're doing the ultimate individualized educational plan. I'm going to homeschool her. And they said, oh, you can't do that. You're not a trained teacher. I was like, oh, no, 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 no. In North Carolina, where I, where I live, and every state's different, that all you have to have is a high school diploma. And I, she's my child, so I know her the best. And I know how she learns. And Roseanne, we started homeschooling her August 1st. By Christmas, 
of that same year, she was reading on grade level, third grade level. So, you know, I got into homeschooling quite on purpose because right. I'm intentional about it. But we took a winding path <laughs> to it. What an know? unbelievable As story. A lot of parents do. Yes, absolutely. I mean, even my journey yeah. to homeschooling wasn't intentional, right? Like it it ha you started right. out intentional and then you had a tragedy and then you said, wait a second, I think I can do yes. better because then my child's needs aren't getting met. But my journey with Max was that right. um he was you know struggling physically and we said, Okay, let's homeschool yes. him temporarily. And then we were like, this right. is pretty great. Like, uh, there right. are so many benefits, not just educationally, but socially, because he had so many more yes. opportunities for great, really great social opportunities, not just shuffling around. And, you know, when he was in school, the kids, like, they weren't allowing them to talk at lunch, like in kindergarten, they weren't allowing them to talk at yes. lunch. And I was like, what? You know what I mean? So I was like, this, that this has to, to really end. And, you know, so you obviously went on to homeschool all, all your kids. Well, my first three are adults now and yeah. I did not homeschool at two middles. Um, but my oldest son has autism and you know, epilepsy, intellectual disability, the whole nine yards, bipolar disorder, a lot of things. Right. And he, in his senior year of high school, was getting bullied so badly oh. that um, the last semester of his senior year, I was like, you know what? I am done. I am done trying to teach my child um, that just because a, another kid says to do something does not make him your friend. He's bullying you by getting you to do things that sh you should not do. And so I pulled Sam out of um his it's halfway through his senior year and homeschooled him he did it kind of in partnership with the school because it was like a medically necessary um doing school at home situation but it was homeschooling i taught him life skills that weren't being done at school at public school but the biggest thing was he had been doing menu math for years years and years of where they hand a kid a like a um, simulated menu, right, from a restaurant, mm -hmm. and have yep. them pick out certain items that they want to buy, and then you know how what, add all that up. I give you a twenty dollar bill. How much change do you have? So it's a lot of addition and subtraction, etc. And he, you know, no wonder he was acting out during math class, he was bored out of his mind. I went back to the school and I asked them, I said, can I please have a pre-algebra book? Back then they had books, you know what I'm saying? Yes. <laughs> um, <laughs> and they were like, oh, Sam can't do the books. He needs to do the menu math. I was like, no, he's bored out of his mind. That's why he's having behavior issues. And I need a pre-algebra book. So finally, reluctantly, they gave me one and I started at page one, going through it with him. And, you know, he was fascinated by it. He was intrigued. He loves puzzles and codes and stuff like that. And he thought it was like a code to figure out, you know, 2X equals six. What does that mean? And he was just amazed and he thrived, thrived with that challenge of learning something new. And the school would have never had done that. I mean, they would never. have never put a pre-algebra mm -mm. book in front of him and try to teach him that. Never. So he he got to graduate and walk with his classmates, which is what he really kind of wanted to do. But he learned more in that semester, that last semester, than he did in three and a half years of high school. Because he wasn't being challenged, Terry. You know, and he was wasn't old. getting that stimulated. He wasn't getting stimulated, but now he, he like learned so much on his own. And he told me um, a few months ago, he said, Mom, I'm learning more now on my own than I did ever, than I, than I ever did in high school. He said, because I'm interested. He said, I'm learning 
reading and getting better with reading, getting better with writing, getting better with science and history because I'm interested in learning about these topics that I want to learn. And so, you know, you can teach anything, math, science, whatever, if the child is interested in the topic. You know, his his big thing right now is Thomas Edison. He's improving his reading. He's learning history. He's learning about science. He's learning about everything. Um, not so much math, but, you know, but he's, he's learning because he he's wants excited. to. And he's right. challenged. Pro That's the beauty of project-based learning, right? Yeah. And yet project-based learning, when you can go deep, which is the beauty yes. of homeschooling and not every school does this, yes. you know, there's different ways to teach homeschooling and classical education is one of them, but project-based learning is another. And so, you know, we taught everything through science and history and it's amazing. And kids really, you know, as much as these our special needs kids might struggle in a traditional mm -hmm. classroom, they can do exceptionally well with project-based learning um, it, when it's their preferred area of interest. So Terry, I have a question. So, you know, there, there are Absolutely. people that are new to homeschooling, right? What should, what are the steps parents should take when considering mm -hmm. homeschooling? Cause you're an expert at walking people through starting homeschooling. Sure. Well, the first thing to do is make sure that you are homeschooling legally. That is very important. And every state is different. You know, North Carolina is way different than Pennsylvania and different than Idaho, et cetera. Every state is different. It's important that you do so legally. Otherwise, you'll be held in contempt and, and truancy and all this stuff. So it's very important to know the steps in your state. HSLDA.org or .com. I think it's .org. Um, they have a whole laundry list of states, a map you can pick your state out on and learn the steps to homeschool um, legally. I'm big on if I don't know the answer, I'll find out the answer and I'll point people in the right direction. And HSLDA.org is where to go for that legal information. So that's step one is to legally homeschool um, and find out how to do that and get all the paperwork necessary that when you go to um, pull your child out or not, you know, withdraw him or her, or just um, let's say they're in kindergarten, they don't even start public school. How do you, you know, start homeschooling right from the beginning, which is wonderful. HSLDA will walk you through that. So that's step one, legally homeschool. Step two is find out what your child's learning styles are. You know, and some people have one learning style. Other people have a couple of different learning styles. I know I do. We all have particular learning styles. So do some research on your child. Give them choices of how to learn. There's um, also something you should do at the start. And especially if you pull a child out of public school, um, and that is do placement tests. There are many different kind of providers that do pr placement tests. You, know, you can find a um, educational consultant that will do that. You can go on, um, I know monarch.com has them, like free placement tests that you can do with your child. And so you have an idea of really where they are academically. You know, let's say you pull out your third grade child, right? Your third grade boy. And suddenly you find that through this placement test that he is actually in fourth grade math, grade reading. And if you have that information, that's great information. That means that you can do fourth grade math with that child and then start at second grade and work your way up with the reading. And that's good information right there. I mean, also when you are doing these placement tests, it's not even testing, just where to place them. Yeah. It helps you to understand where the gaps are or even the strengths that you may want to go further yes. into a certain area where you didn't expect. Right. Exactly. If you discover that your child has weaknesses in like percentages and decimals, 
then you can hit that hot, hot and heavy and teach that. You know, you don't have to have um, all the curriculum. I see so many times, and we'll get to curriculum here in a second, but I see all the t all, a lot in like Facebook homeschool groups. So what are the best curriculums out there for them? I'm like, whoa, you've, you're putting the, you know, cart before the horse kind of deal because mm -hmm. curriculum is like a third in your in your wheelhouse when when you know that there are some deficiency deficits <laughs> i can't english today i have that daylight savings time hangover <laughs> <laughs> but um me too terry me too you have some deficits you know the struggle is real you know why we have that i don't know we're not even anyway but when when we when we see where a child is deficit at or where they have a strength at and need to be challenged, then placement tests will do that. But you don't go and dive in into the curriculum part right out of the gate. You've got to know your child a little bit and maybe do a little bit of unschooling and get some patterns that are instilled in, pub, in, in public school out of you and the child. It's almost when like a, first a school detox. Absolutely. Yes. And that's a real thing. And, but when, like my husband would say, oh, Laura needs to start homeschool at eight in the morning because that's when public school starts. I'm like, no, <laughs> no, we're not doing that. Because one, she has chronic migraines. She needs to sleep. That's one. Two is this is homeschool. It's more about the home and less of the school. You know, learning happens all over the house in many different ways. And it's not just relegated to A to two. That's too long. Because in public school, the main thing you're doing is crowd control. And a amen, Terry. What takes a homeschooler like two hours. You know, we could do homeschool the whole day in two hours, all subjects. Yeah. yeah. I like to advise parents that the metrics is about one to two hours of direct instruction is what equals a six and a half hour school day. Yes. And I think that's surprising to people. Our special needs kids probably need a couple of hours. Um, but I love that yeah. you said like, you don't have to jump into curriculum. That's one of the biggest mistakes I see. You also don't have to jump in no. the rigid schedule. And you can actually schedule in, like, we got had museum passes. Mm -hmm. We did social, right. you know, play dates at least three times a week, right? And and for older kids, it's yeah. getting together with other families and, you know, doing activities. There's so many things you can do. But direct right. instruction, it is true in a public school. It's sort of crowd control. I hate to say it because, you know, what's the smallest class you're going to have? Yeah. 18 kids? you know, 16 kids, like, you know, that's a lot of kids if they're little, right? You know, um, and there are many schools yeah. that have 30 kids in a class. Yeah. Yeah. My son Jacob's, um, all his classes were 30 kids. Yeah. And that's just that's so a lot much. of kids. It's, but a lot, then it's a lot of kids. The, that's a lot of kids, you know. But the third thing, um, going back to the steps, is the curriculum. Okay. And then... At that point, you want to explore curriculum and how I did that. And I think it's a really pretty good method is that I went on Google and I typed in homeschool curriculum providers and then like BJU Press would come up, Monarch came up, Apologia, all these big name curriculum providers. And then I would get on their websites and I would ask that a catalog be sent to me at my home that would happen and I would flip through the catalog and look at their scope and sequence and see what they're doing and check them out. And then I would go to homeschool conferences and conventions. And so I could put my hands on the books and flip through them and check them out. And, but I would check them out for one ease of teaching, because if I was going to be teaching, you know, this curriculum, I wanted it to be where I would enjoy teaching it. I would not be bogged down in the minutia of 
teaching it so that I didn't know how to teach it. Um, or if it was so simplified that it wasn't a challenge to my daughter. There are a lot of places that have homeschool stores, like homeschool um, consignment stores, and they would have the curriculum or supplemental materials. And I would like look at them and thumb through the books. Just a shameless plug. One of the things that we're going to do at the Homeschooling Special Needs Expo is have um, a session that I'm actually going to be teaching on choosing the appropriate curriculum for your special needs child, specifically autistic child, because that's my background. It can feel so overwhelming to pick out yes, yes. curriculum for parents. I mean, and, you know, sometimes yes. parents are feel okay with it. And just know there's all kinds of curriculums. Like oh. I knew I needed when I was preschool homeschooling there my John Carlo, I was like, I need everything. I need the, I need the paper. Mm -hmm. I need the glue all yeah. in the package. And there was that. And then other people yes. didn't need that. <laughs> you know what I mean? So I was like, yes. I want it all done. I want it as easy as possible. I'm the it's lady good. that buys the veggies cut yeah. up. You know what I mean? About this because <laughs> it can feel <laughs> like you can feel super overwhelming. And, you know, you also sometimes people hire consultants like you to help them pick a curriculum. And yeah. that's okay too. Everyone's got to do what works for them. But just know that Absolutely. it's, it's it not as okay. hard as people think, you know? Like, you know, it's that, you know, diving no, into their interests no, we, we make and finding harder. a curriculum. Using websites like education.com, teacherspayteachers.com. You don't have to spend tons of money on a complete box curriculum. That's, you don't need to do that, especially for nope. like littles. Like I would say preschoolers and even kindergarten. Just read to them. Just read to them. Play with them. Get them in the kitchen baking a cake with you. Make cookies from scratch with them. And go on nature walks. Walk through the neighborhood. Talk with your child. You know, explain, oh, well, today we're going to wear the orange shirt and the blue shorts. You know, whatever. Describe things to them. When it gets up to first grade and second grade, you want to um, read to them, continue read to them, but follow along with your finger, you know, follow, read along with your finger on the word and point out words to them, introduce colors and stuff. Because Roseanne, we have education in the United States so messed up. Because we're not teaching to where the child is developmentally. No, we're not. You know, learning how to read. They're not developmentally set up to do that. And that's where kids struggle at. And then we get this misconception of, oh, Johnny is not reading on, this, on the first grade level. Well, no, he's not because he's not developmentally there. If we, if we have dyslexia or any reading disabilities in the family, but we always want to focus on phonics, too, Phonics yes. can be fun, rhyming. And of course, with younger kids, yes. we want to have heavy, heavy emphasis on socialization and play. I mean, play is the language and the learning of kids. Yes. Um, and it, it can't be minimized. Just like I said, oh, forget yes. this. My kid's going to get in trouble because he's talking at lunch. Are you kidding me? Like, we're Italian. We talk and we sit down. <laughs> you know, I was like, this ain't going to work, you know? <laughs> Right. So, um, well, so I think that's really important for parents to realize that just because they're not moving in the same trajectory, I mean, it doesn't mean we ignore things. It just means that they'll get there, but maybe in a different way than a public school curriculum. Um, right. and that's okay. Right. If it's speaking to your child's strengths and needs. And um, you touched on, you touched on something that I want to address is that um, socialization, the S word, are not allowed to socialize like you think they are and are being told not to talk at lunchtime. What in the world? You know, and I know that my daughter, we started going to this co-op, right? And it had all ages. The classes had at all ages. She 
she now has a full dynamic of how to socially be aware and whether it's younger kids or older kids, adults, she can talk and hold conversations with a wide variety of age groups because she wasn't stuck in a room with 30 other five-year-olds or 30 other seven-year-olds or whatever. I want to be able to pick and choose who we hang out with. And, but my, I'll never forget. This is a really funny story. We, um, Laura and I went to the grocery store in the middle of the day. Right. And there's this man, a customer in there. And he said, little girl, why aren't you in school? Are you sick? And Laura said, no, I'm homeschooled. And he said, oh, well, what about socialization? Don't you miss your friends, little girl? And she very quickly said, no, I'm, I'm talking to you, aren't I? And I mean, it just, <laughs> she just totally shut him down because, you know, she was having a conversation with an adult and holding her own. And I know it sounded rude, but it really, it really wasn't rude. I do things based on what one God tells me and to what my husband and I decide to do together and the raising of our daughter and our other children, but they're grown ups now, but we don't pay attention to what strangers say to us. Yeah. They, they say a lot. And you know, there's so many reasons why people homeschool yes. their kids, right? You know, or, religion is one well, of them. There's special needs, well-meaning friends and family. Mm -hmm. They, you know, yes. but there are many reasons why. And I was always astounded that people, it was always in the grocery store target. People would say things, right. You know, because we would bang out our curriculum in the morning, one to two hours. And then, yes. you know, we would do stuff. And we, we did a ton of socialization when we were like hardcore school homeschooling. Like I said, we, we were part of a co-op. We were part of a social group. We were, I was organizing fun stuff with yes. the other parents. Like we had museum passes and we were just always doing something where I live and people who are homeschoolers or thinking about it should know that, you know, every homeschooling, as Terry said, every state is different. So I happen to be in Connecticut. It's a very homeschool friendly state. It's pretty easy to homeschool here. Um, you know, you, you, and, and so that means there's a lot of people that are right. homeschooling. And so there were tons of activities to do. I mean, it was hard to keep up with all the yes. things I could do, which is so cool. Yes. Um, and certain states are amazing. Other states, yes. not so much, but you know, there's a lot to do. So in yeah. when parents mm -hmm. are homeschooling in this journey or thinking about it, what is, what are the other steps they need to consider? So if I were, if I had to do it all over again, you know, and that would be great, but I would definitely count their therapies, whether it's occupational therapy, speech therapy, I would consider that homeschooling because they work so hard in those therapies that absolutely I would integrate those into the homeschooling schedule and make that a part of homeschool. You know, kids work hard in those, in those therapies. And so why not? Those same therapies are integrated into a public school schedule. You don't have to kind of worry about, you know, getting math in or getting history in or whatever. That's it. You've had a homeschool day and don't get stressed out about getting everything in you know, there are some subjects like math that really should be every single day because it builds on it on itself. And reading is like that too. Let's say Thursday is therapy day. Maybe do math that day, but that's it. And do science two days a week, do history three days a week or whatever, but make it your homeschool. You know, you don't, you are not a held accountable by anybody but yourself and what your state tells you you have to do. You know, my state, North Carolina, have to homeschool for 180 days. We have to maintain records. Don't freak out about it. You just do it. Keep plugging. Find what works for you. Integrate the therapies into homeschool and make it so that 
your whole homeschool is your homeschool. Integrating therapies into the day and don't don't hold yourself to what feels like a traditional school schedule, right? And, you know, I know we used to stack in medical appointments. Yes. We used to do all different things and build our schedule. I mean, that's pretty common, you know, whether I have a, you know, a kid who's autistic, a pans pandas kid. I have a lot of medical reasons why people homeschool their kids. And again, sometimes they're like me, they see it as a temporary, right? And you even mentioned homebound tutoring. If somebody has an IEP, some of my kids right. are getting homebound one-to-one -one tutoring and then they build out a day mm -hmm. like a homeschooler. So there's all different versions. Right. And um, and just know that's a legal process to get homebound tutoring through an IEP process. Um, I do see a lot of kids getting that, um, especially yeah. when a school, when mm -hmm. a child is not well enough to come to school, of course, but also I see schools sometimes doing that because they're not really sure what to right. do, um, with, with a child. And if a parent, yes. you know, is a, is able to provide other services throughout the day, um, you know, that is something you have to work out through an IEP process. Um, but it could be That's a right. viable option, you know? Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. So what other things should a parent consider when they're homeschooling as we kind of, you know, start wrapping up? So if you're in a state that allows um, homeschool students to participate in public school sporting, your homeschool is what you make of it. It's really based on what the child is interested in. And they open that up to homeschoolers. And that's a great opportunity for higher maths, the higher sciences, and other things like that. And they get college credit while doing high school. And that's, that's just a win-win. What I have found when people are doing things like dual enrollment, like it um, in our state, they can take super discounted classes at the state university. They're not even paying full prices. So you want to explore and you do want to explore yes. your town rules, right? About, you know, for example, like even um, my younger son goes to a private right. school. And so the town has a wonderful robotics team. And I was like, well, he's legally allowed to be on that team, even though he's not going in that. So he's allowed so, you know, explore the options because sometimes unless you ask, you don't know. Um, but there are restrictions based on where you live and you might not be able to be on, you know, an athletic team. But I would right. ask for the rules in writing. That's what Dr. Rowe says. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Always get things like that right? in writing. So let's talk about the expo. Yes. And because we want parents to know, like, how can they be updated? You know, how can they continue to update themselves or best practices, really learn from the experts um, about homeschooling special needs kids? Or even if you're listening and you don't right. have a special needs kid, um, let's talk about the homeschooling special needs expo. Like I said, I'm going to be there. You're going to be there. Temple Grandin's going to be there. And there's going to be um, 25 exhibitors and it's a great opportunity to learn more. Um, and it's in Shelby, North Carolina, which is just outside of Charlotte, yes. June 28th, 29th, 2024, if you're watching this. Right. Um, so talk to us a little bit about yes. this conference, which will be in the show notes, by the way. The Homeschooling Special Needs Expo features 50 educational sessions where you can learn um, as a homeschooling special needs parent all there is to know about so many different aspects of special needs from autism, ADHD, dyslexia, dysgraphia, um, Down syndrome, uh, CP, whole gambit. And these experts in their fields have come together and will be speaking into you, speaking knowledge. They get to go to the exhibit hall. But the big thing is, and um, it just still blows my mind, that Dr. Temple Grandin will be in the house. That's, that's just a really great way to get up close and personal with Dr. Temple Grandin, who's renowned for her autism advocacy. And, but she will be in the house, which is so unusual. 
Um, it just blows my mind. I have a child on the spectrum, whether that's ADHD or autism or anything in between. The expo will give you the tools you need. I'm going to be teaching a, a session on homeschooling your autistic preschooler. So that's um, something new that I've added. So needed, Terry. And uh, Apologia will be there, BJU Press, teaching textbooks, a whole host of other vendors, including yourself. Yes. Um, the lineup of this expo is nothing short than a God thing. And I'm not yeah. ashamed to say that because he has orchestrated this whole thing. And one thing that's very unique about this expo is that we will have a church track. It's just going to be an incredible event. Um, and I just want to encourage people to register early so that they can get um, a ticket. I have to cap the, the attendees for this it's 700 people because the you know fire codes and stuff silly things <laughs> like that but, but you want to get your ticket early yeah and it's just so 79 dollars a person um and they're often you know discounted rates and i know that you'll have a coupon for your your listeners. So just to recap what this event is, right? It's the homeschooling special needs expo. You can go to bit.ly forward slash D R R O S E A N N. It doesn't matter if it's lower or upper on the Dr. Roseanne. It's in, it's from June 28th to 29th in Shelby, North Carolina. That's 2024. And That's it right. is an opportunity to um, yes. attend up to 50 different um, different learning opportunities from everything to do with um, homeschooling, special needs kids who have autism to kids with ADHD. I'm there talking about self-regulation and different brain tools um, to support. I'm there speaking three times, plus I'm a vendor, so you're, you'll be able to have a chance to meet and greet with me. And there is also a, a track for churches who are supporting Christian homeschoolers, which I love. So this is a, and there's tons of vendors and you get to actually see curriculum, test it out. And um, I'll be there with magnesium samples. So if you want to try my neurotastic yes. uh, multi-mag brain formula, it's, it's behind me up there. Um, <clears throat> as we like to say, Jesus approved in our, <laughs> in our office. Um, right. So, but this is a wonderful opportunity. I know you're doing so much of this work yourself, Terry. Um, and you know, you want to grab a ticket early, it will sell out. Um, and, oh. and again, the, just like the Hodges, you can go down to Charlotte and make a little mini vacation out of it. There's lots of fun things to do. Be on the lookout for the website yes. for um, things to do. And I think that's incredible um, because, you know, there it's, it could be a new yes. city. You don't have to be living in around North Carolina. You can come just for this event and then stay no. and do some fun stuff. And that's what we're planning on doing, Terry. Absolutely. I'm working on a resource page for the website right now on um, local and regional things to do in the area. I'll... The cutoff for hotels is about a month away from the um, the expos around June. I mean May twenty seventh. That's the cutoff for the hotels. So you might want to, you know, get your tickets for the expo and get your hotels because they will sell out. Yeah. Well, Terry, thank you so much for this awesome conversation about you know the You're four welcome. steps needed to homeschool special needs kids. And I was it really enlightening and I think it empowers parents and hopefully makes them not feel so afraid and maybe consider this as an option. Um, even if you don't think it's an option, I know over the yes. years I've helped many special needs parents walk into homeschooling and feel really good about it. Um, so, and being at this event is an opportunity to learn more um, from top people in the field and also to connect with other people that are homeschooling, which is so fun, right? Like everyone yes. gets to see differently, but thank you yes. for your amazing work. I look forward to actually spending time with you in person thank in you. Shelby, North Carolina, yes. June 28th, 29th. 
and grab your tickets. You can go to bit.ly forward slash D R R O S E A N N, Dr. Roseanne. Um, you also can connect um, with Terry at IAJ Ministries. Um, and thank you. And, you know, I get to say, God bless you for your work. So that is always really exciting. But what, you know, looking forward to being at this event and speaking there and meeting so many of the people that we get to better their lives. So thanks, Terry.